I want to introduce you guys to Congressman Ro Khanna. He joins us here in the studio. Now, this is a little unusual because normally we don't have guests in the main show, The Young Turks, but but we had Bernie Sanders on and we have Congressman Khan on. I wonder why that could be. All right, Congressman Khan is from the 17th District of California, and he recently won election against an incumbent, a very long term incumbent. Um, well, Congressman Khan, are you aware of something called the Justice Democrats? The, of course I am. You are, the strong progressive wing of the Democratic Party that's uncorrupted by corporate and PAC money? Absolutely. Yes. Quick question for you, um, will you join the Justice Democrats? Yes, with enthusiasm. Okay, so you're officially a Justice Democrat now? I am. Okay, one more question for you, <laughs> will you be our champion? I would be honored to. <laughs> There's a sitting US Congressman and Justice Democrat. Now, I'm the host of the Iron Turks. I'm also one of the founders of the Justice Democrats, so welcome. Thank you. <laughs> it's right. an honor to be on this with Bernie Sanders being your only other guest. So. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, we have a lot of guests on TYT interviews, but we yes. don't normally do it on the Young Turks, so it's great to have you here. So, uh, as a sitting US Congressman joining a new wing of the Democratic Party, that's a big, big move. Uh, why? What do you like about the Justice Democrats? It's time that the Democrats had a clear, bold, progressive vision, and that we had spine and willingness to stand up for those bold, progressive ideas. And that's what Justice Democrats are about. It's for Medicare for all, free public college, no corporate PAC money. This is what the Democratic Party needs to stand for. The skeptics will say, now you can't not take corporate or PAC money and win elections. You guys are being unrealistic. Well, I did. <laughs> I, I, I didn't take PAC money or lobbyist money. And you know what uh, happened? A lot of people in the district said, you know what, we're going to go uh, and vote for this guy. We're going to support this guy because of that pledge. And I think Democrats across the country uh, will realize if they take a pledge not to take PAC money, not to take lobbyist money, they're going to be rewarded by hundreds of thousands of people across this country. country. Bernie Sanders showed that. So they'll also say, now wait a minute, uh, primary incumbents hurts the Democratic Party. What's your take on that? I've never understood that argument. And I promised, because I ran against an incumbent, and I said, look, if I get there, I'm not going to close the door on other folks. This is a democracy. These seats don't belong to me, they don't belong to anyone. They belong uh, to people, and you ought to earn the right to represent folks. And competition makes you better. I don't understand why an incumbent is afraid. If someone wants to run against me, great, I'll go share my ideas, share my vision. It'll make our party stronger. And this is, a, you know, we have a 97% incumbent reelection rate in this country. The turnover rate in the United States Congress is less than European monarchies, according to an Economist article. This is why people are so upset, and we need competition. You know, it's ironic because now everybody who gets into office immediately wants to, of course, burn the bridge behind them. Because not all of them, but almost all of them at some point beat an incumbent. Right. <laughs> right. But the minute they're in, no, 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 you can't challenge incumbents. And they say it hurts the party, but the Republican Party's been running primaries for a long, long time. They seem to be doing pretty well electorally. And they, look, they had 17 candidates in their presidential election, and it energizes people, it gets more new ideas out there. And it, we need new bold voices. People are gonna stick up for their convictions. We need more women, more minorities. How are you gonna get more women, more minorities, more progressives elected if you can never primary anyone? It was the same argument that I found so frustrating as a challenger who didn't have a famous name, didn't have connections. And I promised myself, I said, if I get there, I'm not gonna make the same mistake. How did you wind up winning? Because you know, Mike Honda was a very long term yeah. congressman in California in a comfortably blue district. Right. So you had to take him on in a primary, and he, like you said, you had no name recognition, right. uh, Dothraki or otherwise. And so, how in the world did you beat him? And here's the thing he's a decent guy, but and yeah. this is why we can't just say, okay, uh, you can only run if someone is a terrible incumbent. But we had differences. I supported Bernie in the primary, he was a super delegate. For Hillary, I said we need to abolish super delegates. I campaigned on a single pair and Medicare for all. I campaigned saying I'm not going to take PAC money or lobbyist money, and we had a great, great debates. And at the end, I I won on a progressive vision, but the party wasn't any weaker, and it it wasn't some awful negative campaign. And this is where I'm I believe that challenges will actually strengthen the party. And if they're good incumbents, they'll win. If they're good challengers, they'll win. Yeah, and um, how, what do you think is the best way to beat the Republicans in general elections? 
I think it's one to have a bold, clear vision. Look at what the Republicans have done over the last 30 years. They have not moderated their vision. They haven't been incrementalist. They've had a spine for what they believe. We need to have a clear vision of how we're gonna help people. What is our policy that's gonna help someone in Ohio, in Michigan? In my view, that's let's give people a massive wage increase by expanding the earned income tax credit. Let's clearly stand up for a woman's right to choose and not obfuscate that issue. Let's be very clear about issues of race racial justice. Let's be very clear of a single payer and Medicare for all. Let's talk about how we're gonna make college affordable by making public college free. And let's say this is our vision and we have the guts to stand up for it. It's just a question of which policies do we like better? I mean, I mean that's what an election is supposed to be. So Cori Bush is an, a Justice Democrat nominee, right? right. She's, a, she's a candidate and, uh, and she's running against Lacey Clay. It's not to say that Lacey Clay is a terrible person. It's just we think that Cori Bush is more progressive, right? And we like those. And it's a deeply blue district. Yeah. Paul Swearengen running against Joe Manchin. Now that was announced yesterday. Uh, now, Joe Manchin again. I don't know him personally at all, right? But clearly far more conservative, right? Yeah. And 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 Paul Swearengen far more progressive. So I just don't like you said, uh, Congressman McCann, I don't see why that battle of ideas hurts the party. So doesn't a battle of ideas to see what people are most excited about, driven by, and will show out to vote for a better thing for the party? It is, but it's not a better thing for incumbents. I mean, it's <laughs> if you're an incumbent now, like I am, you say, okay, I've got a 96% chance of winning, why take a chance? But that's what people were so frustrated with in the 2016 election. They were frustrated that they didn't feel like they had a voice, that they felt the game was rigged. That they felt that people decided in a closed door who could run. And I believe that if we have these vigorous challenges, young people running, progressives running, saying that they demand a bold vision, A, you're gonna have incumbents more accountable. So you're gonna have more incumbents signing on to Conyers' single payer bill. You're gonna have more incumbents saying, I'm not gonna take PAC money. And you're gonna have more people engaged in the process. In the long run, this is gonna make us a better party. So my guess is that this move will make you fairly popular with voters, <laughs> yeah, right? Well, because, hopefully, yeah. No, and I'll tell you why, because which voter says, no, I'd like to have less choices, right? Right. Which, and, and you said, look, you don't mind running in primaries yourself, right? I, absolutely, if someone, I've said I will debate someone who wants to run against me. I've said, let's have third party candidates. I don't understand why, uh, if you have confidence in your vision and your record, you should not be afraid of competition. And I've never understood why people feel so risk averse about competing. This is an election's an awesome opportunity to share your vision, to connect with people, to inspire people. Yeah, it's partly because the Republican and Democratic parties have a duopoly on power and right. they don't really like to give that up. So my guess is that your colleagues might not be overly happy about this. That's probably true. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, how do you deal with that if if they come and say, how you know, what are you doing here? Are you you know you're helping a, a a wing of the party that might primary me? I say, look, it's it's not personal. In many cases, I respect the contributions of people who Justice Democrats may decide to run. In some cases, I may even think they're good incumbents who should win. But it's a philosophical principle that if we're not going to change, if we're not going to help break through the stagnation of politics and let in new voices, then we're never going to change the system. And so I would say, go run a good race. You, if you were a true progressive, you're likely going to win because there's so many advantages that incumbency has. In fact, welcome and embrace the competition. Yep, absolutely. All right, now before we leave you, I heard your grandfather worked with Gandhi somehow. Is that spent, true? Spent four years in jail in Gandhi's independence movement in the 1940s. Wow. I mean, you want to talk about a revolutionary and a guy who knows how to challenge power? And that's, I think, what gives me a sense of perspective. You know, here he was in jail for four years. He spent 30 years of his life fighting for India's independence. He didn't know whether India would be free or not. And then you think of the consequences to me. So what's the end of the, the world? I lose an election or I don't get to be a United States Congressman. It seems so inconsequential in the context of my grandfather's life. 
But here's what I realized from him, you have to have that level of conviction and willingness to be bold, willingness to believe in something, to have a shot at changing history. That's what we need in the Democratic Party. It's what Bernie Sanders had. It's the sense that I don't care where the chips are gonna fall. I have a vision for a society and I'm gonna fight for that. And that's what animates Justice Democrats. Absolutely, Ro Khanna, the first sitting US Congressman that is a Justice Democrat. Thank you so much for joining Thanks us on the Thanks for having Anchors. me. Membership helps fund the Young Turks. You know one great thing about that? That means we're not accountable to anyone but you guys. That's why we're strong together, because we built this show around you. Come build it even bigger and better at tytnetwork.com slash join.